Arkansas won the toss. They have elected to receive, and here's a small note of irony. The kick returner for the Razorbacks is Madrikas Humphrey, whose dad, Bobby, was one of the great running backs in Alabama history. And Humphrey takes it back. That's only his fourth kickoff return of the year. A true freshman out of Hoover High School in Alabama. His mom and dad, Bobby and Barbara, are in attendance this afternoon. Ryan Mallett, have at it. Well, you know, the first thing, everybody asks me, what's your first impression as a quarterback to quarterback? Envious. <laughs> That's what comes to mind. Oh, my goodness. He's got everything. Broderick Green will open. Now, this might be the, oh, high snap. Play fake Mallard. He's got a receiver open. It's out of the backfield. Jerry is right, flying down the sidelines, and a huge gain. Well, one of the streaks for Ryan Mallett is that he has thrown one pass in excess of 25 yards every game he's played. That takes care of that streak. Streaks alive. Bad snap to start. How do you snap it over a guy who's six foot six or six foot seven? He makes a great catch and then he redirects his eyes downfield. It was supposed to go to DJ Williams right here, but he sees Jarius coming right across the field and Jarius right wide open. What an opening play for Arkansas. That's a gain of 31. Now out of the spread, here's Mallet back for the second time. He's got a man wide open. It's Ronnie Wingo, number 20. Scoots in on for the touchdown, Arkansas. My goodness. Well... Georgia held him to three plays. Alabama it only took two plays for Ryan Mallett to score. Zach Hawker on for the extra point. We played 50 seconds. It's seven nothing. Well, this is a total bust for the Alabama defense. There's the back. He's just going to wheel out. The receiver comes in, and Alabama does not cover him. Miscommunication. Somehow, Alabama, one guy's playing man, and the rest are playing zone. Let me show you one more time. If we could take that play one more. I, I think we had one player playing man, the rest playing zone, and look how calm Ryan Mallett comes off. Arkansas could not have started out any better. Two plays, 7-0. As a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. It's all about tailgating, flag waving, drink shaking, face painting. Aaron to give to Ogilvy, diving in for This is the rivalry. Into the end zone. Yes! Richardson bounces three. Ten, five, touchdown! CC West is all about the rivalry. Yeah! Well, a little look at the rivalry. Alabama defeated Arkansas twice in the Sugar Bowl. The only two times they played previous to Arkansas's uh, entrance into the SEC. Alabama has won the last three, but this place is buzzing. Well, more than buzzing. It's electric. After that Arkansas start... Pass of 31, pass of 43 at 7 zip. Trent Richardson, who returned a kickoff 91 yards. And Duke is back. Here's the kick. Julio Jones is also there. It's Richardson. Tough to bring down. Take six. And let's go back, Gary, and take a look at the touchdown. Vern, it was a total breakdown by Demarcus Milliner. Watch this right here. This guy right here is a bust. We're going to show you everybody else is playing zone. One guy is playing man-to-man. -man. Milliner follows his receivers, but look at everybody else. Zone, 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 zone. One guy playing man-to-man. -man. That's a recipe for disaster. Milliner is the only true freshman starting for the Crimson Tide. There's Ryan Mallett. 
Well, he dreamed about this kind of start. Mark Ingram, Heisman Trophy winner, deep back in the eye behind Greg McElroy. Ingram goes left. Dropped by Jericho Nelson, number 31. McElroy, I think you know the story by now, out of South Lake Carroll High School. 16 and 0 state champions there. Sat behind John Parker Wilson at Alabama. He's undefeated as a starting quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Last time he lost as a starter, he was in the eighth grade. Three wideouts. Ingram is in the backfield. Darius Hanks out of a slot position, but good defense. That didn't look right. I don't, I don't know what happened with that snap, but that looked like that was almost a disastrous play right there also. And now let's take a look at the Alabama offense presented by Chick-fil-A. Up front, Carpenter, Warmack, Blahos, Barrett Jones, and the redshirt freshman DJ Fluker. It's Julio Jones, Williams, Ingram, Preston Dial, and Marquise Mays. Third down, 11. And four wideouts this time. Ingram is one of them. He split wide left. McElroy. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Almost picked off by Isaac Madison as McElroy threw it behind his intended receiver. Well, it's so funny because Isaac Madison changed his name number from 24 to 6 so he could get a pick 6. Well, he had a gift right here. That was a pick 6, and he missed it right to him on the play. Now, Joe Adams will be back to return the punt. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Marquise Mays was the intended receiver. Now Cody Mandel is back. On fourth and 11, Joe Adams at the 28. Line drive. One hopper. Adams will, oh boy, played dangerously close. Not pretty, but very effective punt. Yeah. Razorbacks go the length in two plays. Alabama, three and out. Hogs lead by seven. It's time now to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. And he's got a lot of them, Vern. Uh, this guy, it's uh, no secret, he was a big time recruit from the time he was about in ninth or 10th grade. Everyone knows about his arm strength. I mean, he's got unlimited range on the field, but he's very underrated in his footwork. Look at that off wrong foot throw right there against Florida last year. Decision making like the first play of the game. This is the same play. Number one was covered, came back to the backside and hit it on the bootleg. And then obviously to be a great quarterback in this league or in the next league, you have to make clutch plays. And that play he made against Georgia last week was that clutch player of the year well you can see 40 touchdown passes 20 of them 25 yards or more and first down now at the 11 as joe adams failed to field the punt and it cost him about 12 yards mallet under center toss left side water green number 29 and let's take a look now at the razorback offense and it's presented by chick Fillet. Up front, Demarcus Love, Grayson, Swanson, Bailey, and Dominguez, and they will flip strong and weak. Adams and Childs, wideouts. Niall Davis was scheduled to be the starter, but uh, it's been Roderick Green, number 29, and now here's the empty backfield and Mallet. Four man pressure by the Alabama. Joe Adams, number three, with the catch. Flag. Yeah, they're going to get a face mask on that one. Well, last year, it was Arkansas that was the deer in the headlights. So far in this game, they don't seem like they're at all nervous. Pat Moore is our uh, referee today, and here's the call. Personal foul, face mask. Number 35 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, and the other one, first down. I think it was Nico Johnson, number 35, that had the face mask on that one. Yes, it was, very clearly.
And now the defense. Mar uh, Darius, Marcel Darius, Chapman, Damian Square gets the start. Harris, Hightower, Nico Johnson, Ed Stinson starting for Courtney Upshaw, who is bothered by a bad ankle. First down and 10. Whoops. And I was at practice Thursday, Vern. Ryan Mallett, when he wants to change a play, and he changes a lot of them, will go easy, easy. And I guess that time it's going to go against Alabama again. Prior to the snap, offside, number 57 of the defense, five yard penalty, first down. Now well, that's Marcel Darius, who, as I think most of you know, had to sit out two games for uh, his attendance at a party held by an agent in Miami last yeah. summer. So you can see the offensive line reacted to Darius's movement on the easy call. Two receivers left side. And they'll run it left. This is Green again. Daughter Green number 29. Arkansas looking for a ground game that uh, has been almost non-existent. Of course, you've got Mallet throwing for yards and touchdowns in every game. But. Yeah, uh, well, you really would have to have a lot of patience to call runs, wouldn't you, out here? I know Bobby Petrino says we want to stay balanced and we want to run the ball, but the ability of his quarterbacks and the wide receivers, you almost look at every play you run as a wasted opportunity. Second down. Niall Davis is the running back. Now he comes left and gets just enough to get the first down before he is knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Alabama had allowed only one touchdown. That was a Duke last week in that 62-13 thrashing Alabama laid on the Blue Devils. Uh, here's Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator for Nick Saban's bunch. First down 10. Adams in motion. Mallet lobs it out now. Davis can't hold on. Second down 10. See, that's what Ryan Mallet has to do, Vern, in this football game, is be calm, but flip the switch quickly. When he sees pressure, just calmly just dump it off. And this time he's going to dump it off, avoid the sack, didn't get a completion here, should have, obviously, but calmly manage the pocket. You know, on the other side of the field, Alabama's trying to do the opposite. As Nick Saban likes to say, hit the box. Adams on the quick flip. Works his way down the sidelines, across the 50, out of bounds at the 49. Dre Kirkpatrick, number 21, with the tackle. Let's make this point. The experience for Alabama is on offense. Okay, you saw the breakdown on defense. Also remember, they are the defending national champions. They've been through a lot. But so far this season, this is the first time they've trailed in any football game. They have previous wins this year. San Jose State, Penn State, and Duke. Three wide receivers to the left. Here's the change from Ryan Mallett. Third and four. Flag. How about that little chess match? Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, switched out of the defense when Mallett called the play, and then there was going to try to be a double Snap. switch. Ball start. Number 71 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Mallett was attempting to audible again. Two audibles on one play. Well, the first meeting between two top ten teams in Fayetteville since 79. Uh, Houston came in and defeated Arkansas in that game. And, of course, over the course of the years, the Razorbacks have not fared especially well against top-ranked teams. Five defensive backs on third and nine. Wow. And flickered again. Second time with either delay of the game or movement on the line of scrimmage. I think it was Dominguez that time, number 73, that moved. Might have been the clock, too, though. Prior to the snap, full start. Number 45 of the offense. Oh, Five yard penalty, third down. DJ Williams, a tight end. See, Alabama, that's what they really put pressure on you with their blitz packages. Third and long, they're coming with the house. That's the strength, the nickel defense for Alabama. 
from third and four to third and 14. Mallet flips it out left side. This is Ronnie Wingo, who in the opening drive caught a touchdown pass of 43 yards. Mark Barron with a tackle number four, and uh, the Crimson Tide will get it back. Dylan Breeding, who is another from Hoover, Alabama, is on to punt. Said he attended every Alabama home game since he uh, could remember until he graduated from Hoover. There was no offer from the Crimson Tide. He wound up here in Arkansas, and he's off to a great start this year. He's averaging 46.8. That one takes uh, an Alabama bounce and is down at the 19-yard line. 8.15 to go. Look at this. They're going to go shotgun and similar things to empty here. They do have Ingram in the game. Lejos snaps it back. At McElroy with a lot of time. He goes into the right of the left flank. Michael Williams, number 89, the tight end with the catch. Now let's uh, introduce you to the Razorback defense, which has improved dramatically from a year ago when they were 12th. In the conference, Beckett, Davis, Jones, and Ambrose up front. Leon, a former safety, Jerry Franklin, Jericho Nelson, the linebackers, Broadway, Krim, Thomas, and Madison. And the Wildcat formation with Mark Ingram now to take the direct snap. Has enough for the first down at right tackle. Jerry Franklin, number 34, who leads the Razorbacks in tackles, has this one. Ingram, as you know, missed the first two games because of arthroscopic knee surgery and said he's not at 100%, maybe in a couple of weeks. Wow. But he's up quick off of quick, sure back off of quicker. Now McElroy back at the quarterback spot. Play fake, little pressure. McElroy finds the open man. That's Darius Hanks. Breaks a tackle, and he's picked up 12, 13 yards. Rudell Krim, number four, with the stop. Well, we talked to Mark Ingram about his knee, and he said, I wanted to play against Penn State, but I guess the best decision was to hold me out one more week so I could get a full week of practice. And you can see his feet. He has the quickest feet. For a plus 200 round one pound running back, he's just something to watch when he has that football. And he remains in the running back spot. That's Preston Dial, number 85, who starts in motion. Ingram with a big hole. Stiff arm. Foot race at the 20. And the Razorbacks cannot stop him. Touchdown. He did a little tap dance down the sideline and is in for the score as Thomas and Broadway chased him, did not get him. Well, come on. Ramon Broadway, number 26, wrapped the guy up and save a touchdown. This is wonderful blocking up front, and Ingram hits the hole better than anybody in college football. He finds the crease. He's big. One missed tackle by Thomas, and then Broadway comes around, has an opportunity to save a touchdown. He just tries to block him out of bounds. Jeremy Smelly, number 90, is a perfect 14 to 14 now. On extra points for the year. Mark Ingram, who rushed nine times for 151 yards last week, jumps out to a 54 yard gain on that touchdown. Well, last year, Arkansas gave up 60 plays of more than 20 yards. This year, their longest was 18 yards until that run. Not only does he have great vision and anticipation, but look at his balance to keep his feet inbounds. Alabama answers the call. It started off bad, but their offense is really good. A lot of enthusiasm from Nick Saban. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw him. Jones, the All-American, preseason All-American number 75, had a wonderful block on that play. So did D.J. Fluker, the right tackle. Kate Foster will kick off number 43. And Madrikas Humphrey, number 83. 
is back to return it for the second time. Foster almost fell down. It's a very short kick taken at the 10 yard line and returned out to, across the 30 near the 34. Ross Rasner, number 35. Linebacker moved up to make the catch. Well, it's number 75 on 54. Jones versus Jones, and the guy in white wins this one. The All American, watch this, just turns his man, gets his rear end in the hole, which is what you're supposed to do. And Ingram cuts off a of Fluker's block, number 76, on the middle linebacker. And Ingram, who only had 50 yards last year, has already topped that in this game. Mallet play fake. Uh -oh. First receivers. Oh, boy. High on the right side. It was intended for Kobe Hamilton and Dre Kirkpatrick, number 21. I watched Brian Mallet all day Thursday. He never once made a throw where he didn't rearrange his feet and make a throw. On that one right there, he just threw flat-footed to his right. He anticipated a guy open. That's where he gets himself into trouble. So footwork is still a problem, you would say? On that one, it was. <laughs> okay. Second and ten. Draw play. Green. Young man from Little Rock who began his career in Southern California with the Trojans. Transferred back home. Dante Hightower, number 30, makes the tackle. Big moment here for Dante Hightower. It was in this game a year ago in the first quarter that he suffered a knee injury. Torn ACL out for the year. Said it was a clean block, but uh, this one he's been anticipating. Five defensive backs in on third down. Mallet, right side, left side rather. And look at Broderick Green. Will Lowry, number 29, the walk on defensive back, tried to grab the jersey from behind, and the 29 in red took him with him. Watch how fast Ryan Mallet anticipates a free man coming, throws hot to the outside. That time he showed his quick release to the outside. Kid is hot. That's a decision that a quarterback makes that has to make when you're facing this Alabama blitz package on third down. That's a game of nine, a first down in a 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Incomplete. Intended for Jerry is right. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Tim, thank you. Second down and 10 here, 7-7 seven, seven game. Late first quarter. They'll come left side. It's Broderick Green again getting a lot of work. He was actually the leading runner for last year's team, but modest numbers in the 400s, 432 yards. Lester makes the tackle. Robert Lester, number 37. This ground game has been much discussed. They, they've actually, they do it more by committing. We're seeing a lot of Broderick Green today. But we'll see Wingo and Niall Davis and Dennis Johnson. He is unavailable on the injured list. Suffered a torn bowel in week two. Six defensive backs now. Mallet up. Reads it. He's got Jarius right, left side. That might be enough for the first down. That's a tough matchup for Mark Barron that time, the safety on right. That's the kind of the thing with this Arkansas offensive line. They're going to come from a lot of different angles. Darius Red, I believe, is right here in the slot. Up front, three-man line. Marcel Darius lines up at defensive end and then shifts down, but Mallet moves up in the pocket and dumps it off to the right guy. It's a yard short. Razorbacks will go for it. Roderick Green is in the backfield. Flag down. Boy, already. And, that, and now that's going to probably force a punt. Bobby Petrino looks on. In his third year here. If it's against Arkansas, it'll force a punt. It's mm -hmm. the other way. Obviously a first down. Before the foul, the clock was stopped. The previous play is under further review. Might be the spot. Yes. I thought it was uh, close to the 
the marker, of course, the uh, chain is across the field, but. Well, it looked like he got it. That's pretty close, it mm -hmm. looks like to me, doesn't it? I mean, I yeah. don't see how they can change much of that. I don't either. Now Mallet takes the uh, opportunity to get over to the bench. Ryan Mallet. I think most of you know his story. Grew up until he was 10 years old in Lincoln, 20 miles south of the stadium. Said his most vivid memory as a boy was parking cars here, sitting. There was no uh, seating in the in the south end zone back then in '98, and he would sit on a hill and he watched Arkansas thrash Alabama in a game here in 1998. Family moved to Texarkana. He wanted to play here, but uh, there was a kid named Mitch Mustaine who. Right. Was operating as a freshman quarterback, and so Ryan went to Michigan, started three games as a true freshman, and my, how things have changed since that date. Here's the call. After review, ball will be placed at the 37-yard line. First down. Replay official today is Don Dembinski, and uh, that one goes in favor of the Razorbacks. 7-7 seven, seven game, 357. How big was that? Order. Because there was a motion penalty against Arkansas, and he ended up getting the first down. They would have had to punt. Yep. Just like an extra series for Arkansas. Green is the running back, gets the toss. Good block. And then a nice tackle. So the block from Wade Grayson uh, thought for a moment he was going to get clear, but Nico Johnson, number 35, came up to make the stop. When you talk about Ryan Mallett, they say they want to get him off put your pitcher's mound, and that he's not good when he moves around in the pocket. On this one against Florida, they may beg to differ. He had his feet crossed on the play, threw it off the wrong foot about 50 yards in the air for a touchdown. Well, he had uh, his worst game of the year against the Crimson Tide last year. Second down and 10 now. Good time, the right side, throws it. P.J. Williams, the tight end. Oh, he breaks the tackle, uh -oh. fumbles, and it's caught in midair. I believe Dominguez got it. I think Ray Dominguez, the offensive tackle, caught it. There's still a struggle for the football. Upshaw hit him, number 41. There's Dominguez. And you know how this happens. First of all, a wide open receiver again. And what did DJ Williams tell, tell us? I don't like one guy bringing me down. But the hustle by Dominguez that time is the one that, that made the play. Because Upshaw had to hit. And Dominguez from his tackle position ran down there to make the play. Bobbled by Barron. Caught by Dominguez. First down and 10. Just inside the 20. Under pressure, almost picked off. He flew that, threw it while he was falling down. And Barron almost made the pick. Upshaw, again a factor in everything. For the Nick Saban defense to work, Kirby Smart coaches it, and I've watched it in practice. One of the keys is to redirect those receivers. His theory is the receiver knows where he's going, so you got to force him a little off his route. That time the Alabama defense broke the play up by redirecting the receivers and forced Mallet out of the pocket. Second down and 10. Mallet hand off to Green. Power play to the right side. And he's inside the 15. The tackle made by Dre Kirkpatrick, number 21. Two new starting cornerbacks. They, they had to replace... Almost every starter defensively. Now, these kids got some experience last year. Now, let's take a look at the red zone. 
presented by Verizon. Nine touchdowns in ten possessions so far this year. Five defensive backs in for the Crimson Tide. Mallet here. He had him. He had him. He yep, threw Joe it too Adams. hard. Yep. It's really one of the self-critiques that Mallet has said about himself is on third down, I gun it too much. And he had his receiver wide open that time, Joe Adams. He just threw it way too hard, and he's very upset with that throw. That was really simple. That will bring on the freshman from Russellville, Arkansas, Zach Hocker, a 31-yard field goal. He won this spot. In training camp this summer, beat out Alex Tejada, the senior. He's two for two for the year, and make it three for three. See Nick and Kirby Smart, they're showing their defense. They're young, they're saying, good job, good job. It's a long game, a young defense. Give them some credit. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS provided by Goodyear. 10-7, Razorbacks. That was an 11-play drive, helped in no small measure by the review and uh, respotting of the football that resulted in an Arkansas first down. Alex Tejada will kick off number two already with six touchbacks this year. They had only four all of 2009. This one's got a chance. Yeah, Richardson will bring it out from two yards deep. All the way out to the 39 yard line. Russ Rasner makes the tackle number 35. It was kind of Arkansas's worst fears, wasn't it? That Alabama would just stuff it right down their throat. Running the ball last year, Arkansas handled the run game. But I think the willingness of Alabama to throw the ball has forced that Arkansas defense to back up. They're not loading the box like they were a year ago. And for the first time now, we see Trent Richardson in the offensive backfield. Here's McElroy back to throw being chased and intentional grounding no I don't think it's so. out yep that's a fumble that's a fumble Tenarius Wright was chasing him and the initial ruling here is fumbled by McElroy I think it is yes The ball was fumbled, forward and out of bounds. It's returned to the spot of the fumble. So apparently Askew number 99 and first look from the field, the call is that Askew did not have possession. Right, obviously, that's a fumble. It goes forward. Askew fumbles it out of ball. The last team that had possession gets the ball, not the last team that touched it. And so second down and 20. Richardson is the running back behind McElroy. He breaks one tackle. He can't break the second. One of the memorable highlights of the 35-7 Alabama victory a year ago was Richardson getting loose and breaking five tackles on a touchdown. I remember you counting them as yep. he went down the field. Remember this whole game, the Arkansas defense did a good job of handling the run game. But on this one, six different Razorbacks had a shot and they all whiffed. Third and 11. Razorbacks with five DBs. They do blitz Jerry Franklin. And that one is complete for the first down. McElroy finds Julio Jones, number eight. You know, a lot of people say, you know, what's the strength of the difference of this Alabama team? One of them 
is a healthy Julio Jones. He basically played on one leg last year. He's never going to have the stats of some of those, you know, flipping around offenses, but he's as dangerous a receiver there is in college football. For the season, 16 for a 16.5 average. The handoff to Julio Jones coming right. There's a battle for it. That should be a loss. I asked offensive coordinator from Alabama, you got a lot of wildcat? He says, yeah, we got 11 different formations. <laughs> That's a lot of wildcat. So another one there, Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator of the Crimson Tide. That's the end of one in Fayetteville. 10-7 will return to Arkansas. After this message, and a word from your local station. Anything but quiet. Uh, not everybody got a great seat here. These folks are on a hill in the northeast corner. Huh. Razorback State, I'm not sure how much they can see. Here's McElroy on second down. Fires it caught, and it is short of the first down. Preston Dial with the grab. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Daniels and Tracy Wolfson. Uh, no surprises so far, really. Now, you know what I, I think about Alabama is... This is their third straight year. I mean, undefeated. They right. were undefeated two years ago. They lost the SEC championship. Last year, they go undefeated. There's no team more prepared to play in a tougher environment like this than this Alabama football team. Even with their youth on defense? They've been through it. They've been raised in it. They've been around it. They came to Alabama for games like this. Here's McElroy. That one is short. Michael Williams makes his second catch of the afternoon and it is close to the first down line this, Jermaine Thomas and Anthony Leon made the tackle this was a double pick all the way this guy was number one Williams coming across watch the double pick the slot and the receiver both guys will come across double pick double pick there was really only one guy to throw to on the play well the first tackle made by Rudell Krim number four and now they've called for the chain to be brought out. And what did Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator, say about Michael Williams? He's a glorified tackle with ball skills. <laughs> that means the guy can block. It's no accident that Alabama can run the ball the way they do. Short. Now, I'm thinking back to our conversation. That's the very first thing he said to us. He uh, looked down at the lineup. There's Willie Robinson. Played collegiately at Fresno State. And he came here with Bobby Petrino three years ago. Fourth down. Crimson Tide will go for it. At the 37, Richardson is the running back. Tripped up, the flag is down. And a, might be two chances for the Razorbacks to stop this one, either the penalty or the play. Yeah. Great penetration. I don't know who had it. Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 85 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Anthony so, Leon, number one. Yeah, effectively, it was no play because Preston Dial, number 85, moved. Yes, he did. Good call that time. And that's why Leon was able to get into the backfield. He was reacting to the movement by Preston Dial. Nick Saban decides on fourth and a little over five to punt. So Joe Adams is back at the 10-yard line. Way up in the air. Wow, sky high. Touchback. Ten seven Razorbacks. Early moments. Second quarter. Ryan Mallett, eight of thirteen, with a forty-three yard touchdown toss already. Mallet was 
DJ Williams. Jake Beckett said, hey, why didn't you guys invite me? I'd have done it. Yeah, that's right. So we didn't want you along. <laughs> First down and 10. Niall Davis is the running back now. Play fake. And a good one. Oh, my goodness. Jerry is right wide open. Dre Kirkpatrick is, I think, beaten on the play. Yep, double move. You have time to do a double move when you run a play-action pass. Kirkpatrick has no idea. He's got his back turned to the play. But watch how Mallet buys time with the play-action pass. Watch the double move. Out and up. Kirkpatrick is, whoa, beaten by 20 yards. Yes, and a gain of 43. Mallet, right side. Oh, my. Did he catch it? Oh, my. I think he might have, but he's hurt. Hey, Great came, Childs. Came down real awkwardly as he caught the ball. So the celebration of this big game will be muted. Oh, dear. You can't throw a ball any better than this. Watch this ball placed to the outside shoulder. Perfectly thrown, feet come in, and then his right leg kind of gets caught behind him on Kirkpatrick. How about Petrino, Vern? Kirkpatrick gets beat and comes right back at him the next play. Now, Child was his toe on the line. Was his right toe on the line? It was very, very close. Well, they'll take a look in the meantime. Time has been called. Childs limps to the bench. Greg Childs limped toward the uh, locker room, and with every step, he walked a little more confidently. And uh, another look, Gary. Yeah, the question is, did his left foot come down before his right toe touched the line? Obviously, it's going to be reviewed. As is every play in college football, and we have... Uh, Heard from the replay booth, this is confirmed as a catch. Yeah, I think he got his foot down before his right toe touched the right, line. Right, left foot. And so... What a throw, huh? Oh, my goodness. No. Kobe Hamilton, number 11, is lined up wide to the left. Niall Davison is running back now. He gets the handoff, and he is uh, driven down at the six-yard line. And for more on Greg Childs, let's check in with Tracy. Guys, you saw he didn't even stop at the training room. He went directly into the locker room, and it looks like they're looking at his hamstring. So as soon as they come back out and they take further evaluation on him, I'll give you another report, guys. Okay, Trace. Dequan Menzi makes the last stop, and it'll be second down from the six. Well, remember the Florida game last year when Ryan Mallett missed a couple open guys in the end zone and they didn't win the game. He missed easy throws. Will he miss easy throws here? Goes into the end zone and overthrows his tight end, D.J. Williams. Crowd in that uh, section of the stadium wanted a, an interference call. Mark Barron was defending. Third and goal. Joe Adams is on. The roar is because Greg Childs is trotting back uh, into the bench area. Third and goal. 10-7. Razorbacks lead with 11.39 to go. First half. Four wides. 
four-man rush by the Crimson Tide. Malik pumps once. Intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Alabama. Robert Lester, his third interception of this young season. This was not a very convincing throw, was it? I didn't think It so. looked like it was his second or third choice, and he really did not have a lot of conviction when he threw it. This is good three-on-two defense for Alabama right here. They play the system. The linebacker takes away the good throw underneath, and Mallet just assumes that Jarius Wright would be open, and you can't assume against this skilled Alabama defense. Third interception for Mallet this year. Bobby Petrino, are you kidding me? <laughs> Razorback Stadium, Fayetteville, Arkansas, top-ranked Alabama with the ball after the interception by Robbie Lester. And here is McElroy. Mark Ingram back as a running back. He and Richardson will rotate throughout the game. <laughs> about this Alabama team this year got good skill players use them they're in the shotgun Ingram goes right breaks the first tackle and moves it out six yards to the 26 well it's that time in our telecast to cue the duck it's time for the athletic trivia question of the week which is the only team since 1970 to win back-to-back -back unanimous national titles. Only team. Second down. Big hole, big run. Mark Ingram, 10-7 here. Let's find out what's going on elsewhere. Here's Tim. And it's early. First down and 10. Here comes Julio Jones. Well, what a block. He got him the corner. My goodness. Darius Hanks leveled a defender for Arkansas. Yeah, and I think uh, Julio Jones should go over and thank his fellow receiver, which he just did right there. You know, you can talk all you want about the great receivers that Arkansas has, but this is a great bunch right here for Alabama, too. Marquise Mays, Darius Hanks, Julio Jones, they have shown their game-breaking ability in the last two years. That's a gain of 19 and a first down at the 44. Ingram. Nice defensive job led by Patrick Jones, number 95. That it was Patrick Jones who uh, lost the hog hat. You know, we talked to Nick, and it's an interesting his philosophy about coaching. He says on offense, you got to kind of let your guys go do what they do. So if you got receivers that can run routes, you got to kind of form your offense to what they do best. But he said on defense, you got to have a system and stick to your system. You can see he's playing to what his offense does best this year. And he's put Trent Richardson alongside McElroy now. Richardson with a block. Nice little underneath route. Marquise Mays. And he gets loose to the 25-yard line before he's dropped. Elton Ford, number nine, makes the stop. And that's a gain of 18. Well, let's talk about Greg McElroy a little bit. Yep. Okay? As good as Ryan Mallett is, and there's no argument with that, this guy is the perfect guy for the Nick Saban offense. And Jim McElwain, his offensive coordinator, said, for what we do, I wouldn't trade him for anyone in the country. You can see right there how calmly he dropped the ball off to the right guy again. First down and 10. Left side. Huge hole. And the tackle is made at the 17. Well, I find it interesting. Now, you and I have gotten to know Greg McElroy in the last couple of years. You ask about him. Ask his own coach, McElwain. He's, he's great at game management. Yep. You talk to Mark Ingram. What's his best attribute? Game <laughs> management. You talk to Willie Robinson. What about McElroy? Well, he's great at game management, but it's almost a pejorative. It, it's almost like they're 
damning with faint praise. Yeah, well, I don't think he cares. He's undefeated <laughs> and a national champion. You got it. And a Rhodes Scholar candidate, by the way. From behind, the tackle is made. That's Anthony Leon, who spent last year as a safety and has moved up to the linebacker spot. Yeah, Anthony he, Leon made the tackle, but that was stuffed at the point of attack right over here. No movement up front, nowhere to go on the play, and that allowed Leon to come and make the play. Demario Ambrose, number 58, is the guy who stuffed that play. Third and five. Brad Spelling, number 17, the H-back, started in motion. McElroy dances right, got a man open. Marquise Mays, first down. Willie Robinson, defensive coordinator, also said of McElroy, he's got escapability. He does. But you know, one thing that we heard all week from the Arkansas coaches is, we'll take honest mistakes, not mental mistakes. And that was a mental mistake by Arkansas. Alabama came out in a bunch formation, and the defensive backs had no idea what they were doing. Franklin's trying to tell Leon what to do, and there was a lack of communication. Thus, this is such a play. Two wide receivers to the left. Richardson, the running back. Quick flip, left side. Julio Jones. And uh, that one, Elton Ford was right there. You know, it's kind of funny. McElroy is 8 for 10 in the game, and he's a 70% passer right. on the year. The two easiest passes of the game, the two quick screens, he's 0 for 2 on those. He's hit all the ones downfield. The gimmies. He's missing a gimme pop. And the red zone stats in the Horizon red zone. They're 10 of 15 touchdowns. This is the 10th play of the drive at second down. Not much pressure. Flip, right side. Richardson breaks the first tackle. Boy, he puts his nose down and drives for the five, and that's about where he's going to be stopped. Yeah, it could have been so much bigger, though. Demario Ambrose misses a clean shot on Richardson. There's a big difference. Watch the right side of your screen. Richardson catches the ball real deep in the backfield. Ambrose comes up one-on-one, -on -one, and Richardson makes him whiff. That's a big difference having the ball back five more yards here. Third and goal from the four. Ingram is in. And they'll run the Wildcat. Nope, I beg your pardon. McElroy is under center. It's Ingram deep. Into the end zone. Intercepted. And he'll run it out. Andrew Stewart, number 36. So Mallet is picked off for the Razorbacks. McElroy gets picked off for the Crimson Tide. And you talk about a play. Because McElroy had to dodge a line of men in his face, it gave time for the defensive back that time to make the play. Watch this. And This. Andrew Stewart reads the redirect by McElroy, so the combination of the pass rush and the time it created let Stewart jump on the play and make the interception. How do you do? It remains 10-7. in the first half here as Greg McElroy picked off nine yards deep on third down and uh, as he walked 
First of all, beat yourself about the head. Listen to your head coach. A little slap on the backside. And then. Yeah, that, that used to be me. It was like, that's a terrible time for an interception. I'd go, Coach, let me know when there's a good time. Okay? <laughs> First and ten. McElroy's second interception of the year. Here's Broderick Green, number 29. Well, remarkable the similarity in the two interceptions. Yes. Third down at both ends. Mallet kind of lofts it deep, lazily, and picked off nine yards back. And then McElroy, I don't guess he saw Andrew Stewart. Uh, his footwork was off, but when you're throwing to a glorified tackle, mm -hmm. uh, you got to be really careful because those guys can jump those guys. There's no fear. Second down. That's Chris Gregg in motion, wide to the left. Mallet always being chased from behind. Makes the catch. Greg Childs is back on the field emphatically. Gain of seven. This is a sprint out all the way. Ryan Mallett knows he's going to get pressure from the backside. He realizes that guy's unblocked. He has to get rid of the ball, and he makes a wonderful throw on the run to Childs. That's Daquan Menzi, who was coming after Ryan Mallett. Third down and three. Arkansas. Power run right side. Green popped short. Damian Square, number 92, and Marcel Darius with the tackles. Well, you can see that the Alabama, young Alabama defense is supremely talented. They busted for a touchdown, but they're starting to find themselves in the game. They have shut down the run game for Arkansas. Ten rushes for 26 yards in the game. Now Dylan Breeding is back on. Mentioned a, a gaudy 46.8 averages here. At the goal, they come after the block, but Breeding does get it away. Reminiscent of a year ago down in Tuscaloosa yes. when Lorenzo Washington blocked one of Dylan Breeding's nine punts in that game. Okay, the Aflac trivia question, which is the only team since 70 to win back-to-back -back unanimous coaches titles, either AP or the coaches or the BCS. Nebraska. That's right. 94 and 95. And remember, they're the one of the teams that went undefeated three straight years, which to control their own destiny, Alabama will have to do. First down and 10. Handoff Ingram. Well, on the AP side, let's uh, take a look at that list of repeat champions. Alabama 64-65. And again in 78-79. That's the uh, writers and broadcasters poll, AP. And Texas 69-70. Nebraska 94-95 the coaches pull left side Ingram in trouble caught short of the first down at the 49 Ramon Broadway number 26 led the way now let's remind everybody this is our favorite part of the game Vern. remember Arkansas won the toss and except elected to receive so Alabama in this kind of end of the half here should they put points on the board and drain the time Although it gets Mallet, that's hard to do. Could get the ball by scoring and then get it again at the start of the second half. Third and two. Big two stop. Thirty-seven. Yep. Big stop here by this Arkansas defense. Three wides, two to the right. Up the middle, Ingram. Got it. Move the chain. Talk a little bit, Gary, yep. about ball security with these guys. Well, they are about as tight as you can get. Yeah. Over what, over 600 possessions where they've either run it, Richardson and Ingram, or received passes, and they've only had two fumbles in their career. So pretty safe to hand the ball to Richardson. 696 touches.
That's including the last carry. And now Richardson replaces Ingram. Mark telling us in a phone conversation, we are like brothers. We compete, but we don't compete. Pump fake, man wide open. Picked off. Oh, baby. Rudell Krem read the throw. I don't think McElroy ever saw it. Well, remember, Rudell Krem is a safety, but in 2009, he was a corner. So he has great ball skills. It was a fake quick screen. Watch him fake the quick screen out here and then wheel route. This guy reads it all the way. Fake quick screen. Looks like he's wide open, but Krim just eats up the play. Intended for Darius Hanks. Second interception. Off the arm of Greg McElroy here in the second quarter. Now Mallet with a chance. That one, DJ Williams at the 38. Looks like they may go without a huddle here. Take another look, Gary. Hanks in the slot. Wheel route. McElroy says in practice it worked against the scout team every time. <laughs> Here's Mallet back. Underneath route. That's DJ Williams. That's a gain of 12. For the senior who caught 61 two years ago. Last year, double team most of the year. First team all conference. And his uh, catching numbers cut in half. Mallet said, what would you catch two years ago? 60, 63? He said, no, 61. <laughs> 61. First and 10. That's Niall Davis. Plenty of time left. Plenty of timeouts left. Move the chains. Move the clock. The young Alabama defense has not faced a sophisticated passing offense like this. Now it's interesting when you think of reputations among coaches. Petrino, offensive genius, guru really, and Saban of course on the other side of the ball. Niall Davis, first down. Stop the clock while they move the chain. And the ball will be spotted just short of the 35. Freshman Alvin Bailey, number 67, pulls around and gets a great block on the play. Watch him come around and just fit beautifully. Nice block on the play and just springs it. Wonderful job. And Marcel Darius is down. Gets to his feet and limps as he heads toward the bench. That is their one-on-one -on -one pass rusher. That's the one guy up front that the Arkansas people said is going to be tough to handle. And did he get hit from behind on the play as he was running? Sometimes those scoop blocks when you're the backside guard comes and gets you. And I wonder, did he get friendly fired or did he get a block from yeah. behind? Child's top of your screen. Now it looks the other direction. Oh, he's got Jarius right. Wow. That combination has clicked today. That's a gain of 20. This is the same play that was a touchdown against Georgia, except the other side of the field. Tight end comes out, fade behind it. Throw it right off the corner. Watch this. Option, bang, right over the top. That's professional level passing. Jarius Wright, four catches for 103 yards. He was shut out last week. Draw play, right side, huge hole. Niall Davis to the one-yard line. Time out, time out. Now, Arkansas has two timeouts, 18 seconds. That means they can run anything in their offense. Niall Davis, you think, oh my goodness, they got to throw here, they got to throw here. Nope. A slashing run by one of the three or four fastest players on this Arkansas team. Clearing draw, block from number 73, Ray Dominguez. Bobby Vitrino. Ball at the one. Niall Davis. Sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. Time taken. We'll step aside. Three men 
Look at this. Ryan Mallett was in the huddle. He saw all of his offensive linemen cheering to the fans. He grabbed them and said, get in the huddle, concentrate. Maturity. The word they've used about this team this year is maturity. Everybody caught, thought Ryan Mallett has this reputation as being a hard-throwing, fun-loving guy, but right there he showed he has the maturity to control his team. Yeah, he said, I'm, I'm controlling my emotions this year. And then he added, I am a quarterback, not just a thrower. First and goal, Wingo. Too many men on the field for Alabama. They had 12. Not a huge penalty. No. <laughs> Half the distance. That'll be a couple of inches. Alabama coaching staff is out on the field. They're Prior to the snap, illegal substitution on the defense. 12 men on the field, half the distance to the goal. I think Nick was upset because he was trying to signal timeout, but couldn't get the attention of any of the officials. He knew he had the wrong group in there, and that's why he was telling the official right there. And that's why he was just out on the field giving the same indication. I called timeout. It wasn't given. Wingo again. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown, Arkansas. What a turnaround. Two huge interceptions by Greg McElroy. He's never lost as a starter. 17-0 for the Crimson Tide. Ryan Mallett leads his team down the field, and they get the touchdown with 15 seconds to go before halftime. with the extra point. Ryan Mallett with the touchdown from a yard out. Used all of that six foot, six inch frame to score the touchdown. Bobby Petrino played collegiately for his dad at Carroll College in Helena, Montana. He said to us yesterday, this is just like Carroll versus Montana Tech. Maybe on a different level. <laughs> Stats look good. McElroy 9 of 13 overall, but two interceptions. And on the last drive, Gary, Mallet 4 for 4, 41 yards. Yeah, perfection. But just remember one thing. Greg McElroy on the road, Auburn last year, trailed 14 to nothing, brought that one back. Told us uh, earlier this week that was the defining drive, not only for him, but for his teammates. I think they became real believers in McElroy. This one is short. Michael Williams. Let's look back at Marcel Darius right here, his injury. I think one of his own guys gets blocked into him on the play. Damian Square, number 92, I think is a guy who got him from behind. He was actually blocked into him. I thought it was a pulling guard, but it was friendly fire. Final 11 seconds of the first half. Well, what will they be doing here? Handing it off. Giving it to a pretty good back. Richardson, foot race. Jerry Franklin tracing from behind. Time has expired. And that will be the end of the half. <laughs> Trying to run out the half. I think they should take a knee. There's no way they can score. And Trent Richardson almost takes it to the house. Ramon Broadway finally got there. Had the angle of Franklin with the initial chase. My, oh, my. Take a deep breath, everybody. we got a ways to go. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Nick Saban. Thanks, Vern. Two crucial interceptions by your quarterback, Greg McElroy. Very unlike him. What's causing him so many problems out there? Well, he just didn't throw the ball where he should have thrown it. 
Um, I probably had a bad play for the coverage they ran on the last one. But we gave them, you know, we lost two opportunities to score and gave them an opportunity to score, which is a real huge swing right before the half. A quick strike to start the game for them. A, another drive to end it with a touchdown. Your young defense, what will you tell them at half? Well, we got to keep our poise. We're not executing and doing what we're supposed to do. we got too many guys making mistakes, busting coverages. You know, wrong guys are rushing. So we just got to settle down and get some poise about what we're doing and, and, you know, play better football fundamentally. Thanks a lot. Fern, back to you. Tracy, thank you. Arkansas with a late score. Touchdown. They lead at the half. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Coach, the big question going into this game was about your defense, but they've answered so far. What's been the key for them so far? Well, we're doing a good job of playing hard. We, they've made some plays. We just keep playing. We've been able to force some turnovers. We do need to do a better job of pressuring the quarterback and stopping the run. You talked about believing. You're up 17-7. So what was the message to your team in the locker room? We just got to keep doing what we're doing, stick together as a team, know that it's going to be hard fought, and hang in there. Thanks a lot. Good luck. Tracy, thank you. Razorback Stadium, Fayetteville. Beautiful part of this country here in the Ozarks. And uh, a somewhat enthusiastic crowd now as the Razorbacks have a 10-point lead over top-ranked Alabama. Alabama will get the ball to open the third quarter. Alex Tejada will kick it off. Trent Richardson, Julio Jones, and the two deep backs for the Crimson Tide. And this will be Richardson. Last week, he returned 191 yards for a touchdown. And this time, he gets it out uh, across from the 30. Well, I'm just, I, we hoped for a really good battle this afternoon. We've gotten one. Any surprises at all for you? I, I guess the, the fact that the Alabama defense, we knew they were young, but they're making a lot of mental mistakes. Right. Guys wide open for Arkansas. I'm surprised that Alabama doesn't try to run the ball more. The one drive they did score, they had Ingram really kitten them and then throw off the run game. I think that's what we'll see here in the second half. As Nick says, I got a running game. Let me see if they can stop that first. The Heisman Trophy winner is the tailback, and he gets the handoff and comes left to the 38-39 yard line. Now, Gary, let's take a look at halftime trends here in Fayetteville. Well, let's start with the two quarterbacks. These were the leading passers in the country. In fact, McElroy statistically was two interceptions, obviously really hurt his football team. Ryan Mallett, 250 yards passing in the first half. Ingram got off well. Remember, he only had 50 last year, but look at this. Averaging 253 a game, 300 yards at halftime. That's stunning. Hand off again. Ingram comes left. Stopped at the 40-yard line by Ambrose. Demario Ambrose. Willie Robertson selected him as the, the most improved player on his defensive unit. Let's go back to what Bobby Petrino said to Tracy. The theme here all week has been we don't have to do something extraordinary to win. Let's just play our game, settle down, play good Arkansas football. That will be good enough. That was the theme. Levance Askew is a late sub. The Quinta Jones went off the field with his shoulder. Three down, stunts. McElroy with a lot of time, but nobody open. He finally does find Preston Dial, and that's good for the first down across the 50. Well, Vern, you said it. A lot of time. Too much time. And Jake Beckett is the guy that needs to put pressure. Let's see how he did against Carpenter. Nothing. Nada. Stoned. That allowed about a four seconds in the pocket to find the guy over the middle. Jake Beckett, one of the better defensive linemen in the SEC. Here's McElroy. Goes deep. Julio Jones, and he overthrows him. Did Jones pull up? I don't know, but they were fighting almost hand-to-hand -hand combat between Broadway and Jones. This was a gimmick play, a throwback for a touchdown. Jones sees it. He tries to jump and get it at his highest point. I don't think he did, Vern. Okay. I think he said, I'm going to catch it at the highest point and just couldn't get it. Second and ten. 
Earl Alexander, number 82, is on the field for the Crimson Tide, top right. Ingram. Wow. And Anthony Leon, number one, did a heck of a job. And that allows Jericho Nelson, number 31, to make the tackle. Yeah, he saw this play all the way and kind of came back door. Carpenter's going to try to hook him. Watch him back door it. Comes inside the tackle and makes the play. Carpenter's saying, oh, I got the fast linebacker, the fast linebacker. Get out there. And he back doors behind him and makes the stop. Third and nine. Can they get any pressure? There's the guy right there, Beckett. Can he do it? They block him behind McElroy. A nice call. Jake Beckett graduated from high school, Vern, as a 225-pound defensive end. He's playing today at 265 pounds, and he comes every play. You may block me once, twice, but I got the next one. Oh, line drive punt. This will go out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Timely sack by Jake Beckett, part of a great family tradition of players here at Arkansas. He was a starting center on uh, a team that defeated Texas when they were number one. His father and his uncle Chris also played here at Arkansas. It goes back to his grandfather, George, who played for Bowden Wyatt in the mid-50s. The Beckett family, and Jake Beckett just comes up with a huge play. 17-7. Ryan Mallett, toss, fake toss. Fires it. Caught! Oh, man. D.J. Williams out to the 34. Well, the question has been to me all week, is Ryan Mallett too tall? Basically, is he a statue in the pocket? Watch his feet here. Bootleg, and then he backs up. Watch him back up by time and deliver a strike. That You can't get better footwork by... Drew Brees doesn't have better footwork than that one right Ooh, there. Ooh, that's high praise. That is high praise. First down and 10. This time they do hand it off to Broderick Green of the 29. Well, well, how tall is Ryan Mallett? This is kind of funny because if you look at the media guide in 2009, Ryan, even when he was at Michigan, was listed 6'7". All of a sudden there was the question... Could a six foot seven, six plus, six foot seven quarterback make it all of a sudden this year? Chunkinage. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what difference does one inch make? <laughs> height? Second down. Second and eight. Got a man open. Right open. Jerry is right. Fifth catch of the game for right and another first down. They're carving up the secondary. And, it, and it, it, it's easy, you know. I mean, when you talk about going, and most of the throws in this game have been to the outside, but this one's to the inside of the field. But right now, as much as Petrino would like to run the ball, they're gashing them in the throwing game. That's a gain of 18, and a first down and 10 at the Alabama 46-yard line. flag before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 71 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's Wade Grayson. If you're wondering, Vern, the last time Alabama's given up a 300-yard passer and Ryan Mallett's at 286 now was in the Sugar Bowl against Brian Johnson. Remember the game they lost? Mm. And then prior to that was 2007, LSU and Matt Flynn beat him in overtime. Remember that game we were on? Very definitely. Been a while. Well, he's hit his last seven. This time he'll be caught for a sack. Courtney Upshaw, number 41, gets through to make the tackle. Let's go back to the studio 
for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim. All right, so we didn't get it. Alabama losing, Texas losing, huge for the flies. <laughs> yeah, there's some ointment somewhere. Oh, nice catch. Roderick Green out of the backfield. And uh, with that nice grab, Ryan Mallett has now hit his last eight passes in succession. Well, let's see if this Alabama defense can play sound defense, as Nick was telling Tracy, get to their assignments and defend this third and long. This would be a tough one if they give this one up. This is a stop they badly need. Third and 13. Dante Hightower will go down. Nope, he's going to stay in an upright stance on the right side. See how many they bring. There's Dante. Yep. They bring four. Mallet has a man short of the first. DJ Williams with the grab, but he's uh, uh, maybe a yard, yard and a half. So I'm guessing that Bobby Petrino is going to go for the first down. Mark Barron with the tackle. Well, this will be fun. What did uh, Derek Dooley call this? The gray zone where yes. you get the gray hairs? Looks to be a little more than a yard. Williams now with five catches. Joe Adams goes left side in the slot. Play fake. Mallet. Oh, boy. Joe Adams to the 21st down. Arkansas. Huge play. This is where the height helped Ryan Mallet. He had an unblocked Alabama player right in his face, and he just flipped it over his head. Watch coming off the end right here. He's going to get a guy right in his face. Fake inside. It was Damian Square, and he just flips it. Beautiful timing and execution on the boot. First down and 10. 10 completions in a row for Mellon. Remember, Alabama, third and long. Arkansas picked it up on two plays. No test left guard to pick up one on the ground. And uh, let's go down to Tracy for this on... Marcel Darius. Yeah, guys, well, we saw him get injured before that half. It was the left ankle. He is right now. It's wrapped up, as you can tell, but Alabama doesn't give any injury info. All they told me was he's okay, but from here down on the sidelines, he is not at full speed, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. Yeah, he's limping. He is. He's favoring it. Modricus Humphrey, the true freshman out of Hoover, Alabama, is wide to the left. Five wide receivers. Ballot in trouble. Holds on to it, but he goes down after the tackle from Mark Barron. Now that is Alabama defense at its best. Mm -hmm. Bringing the sophisticated blitz packages, and they're as good at trail blitzing as anybody in the country, meaning one guy goes, eats up the back, and the next guy follows right behind it. And that's who cleaned up Mark Barron. I'm Ryan Mallet. Loss of seven, third and 16. Williams goes left. Blitz. They try a little quick pass out here to the left, the right side, and the tackle is made by Dre Kirkpatrick. Darius limps back to the defensive huddle. Well, if you can't cover him, rush him. And that's exactly what Alabama did here. Came after Mallet. That was a screen pass all the way. And didn't get the look that he wanted, I guess. Long field goal for the year for Zach Hawker is 48. If he knocks this one through, it would equal that from 48 yards. Bingo! I'll tell you, Austin Tucker did a good job. This was not a good snap. Watch him pick it up on one bounce and get it down in great concentration. 
because that ball was not there until he was swinging his leg. That's wonderful execution on a poor snap. DJ Williams, the senior tight end. Watch him, watch the field goal. That way to go. Well, as bad as it's been for Alabama, yeah, down 13. Been I mean, there before. Yeah, I mean, one drive, mix it up, make it a 20 to 14 game, and then the pressure will move back on Arkansas. Alex Tejada to kick off for the Hogs. This is a good one. Richardson decides to bring it out from three yards into the end zone, and why not? And Greg McElroy back on the field, picked off twice, Gary, in the second quarter. Yeah, so unlike him, this one's going to try to go to the middle, bracketed, cut off on the throw, a big play inside, and this was a gimmick play. This was for a touchdown. This just took too long to throw the ball. That ball should have been delivered maybe a second earlier, and there's no way the safety can get to the play. McElroy for the day, 10 of 15, 109 yards. But uh, the two picks critical. First down and 10 from the 26. Ingram. Ramon Broadway is the first there, number 26. Well, we mentioned Jake Beckett. He had a big sack a few moments ago. The Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. Amazing how this worked, isn't it? His GPA, look at that, perfect. He's already gotten his degree in finance, wants to become a lawyer like his father. His father, Jay, and his mom, Cindy, live in Little Rock. They are here, so is his brother, Chris. His uncle, Chris, rather. Second down, five DBs for Arkansas. McElroy, a lot of room to the left side. Oh, boy, he's popped. Short of the first down. Ramon Broadway, number 26. Watch Julio Jones. You would think you'd want to cover maybe the best receiver in the country. This is a total bust. Julio Jones was right down the middle of the field for a touchdown. Watch this. No one covers him. No one's in the middle of the field. Because the quarterback was forced out of the pocket. But there was no safety anywhere to be seen. A flat bust, and they got away with it. Richardson in the Wildcat now. One of the 11 formations. Oh, can he move the pile? This will be very close to the first down. Looks like he got it. Now, the bust, the assignments for Alabama yeah. has cost them. Right. The busted assignments for Arkansas so far hasn't. So far. Just keep, what do they just keep running plays if you're Alabama? If we saw it, you know the staff for Alabama saw it. Play fake, McElroy. Deep down the left side, Julio Jones. Oh, he dropped it, but a flag is thrown. Yeah, it's going to be interference, but it's only a 15 yard penalty. Again, the jostling between those two. Remember, it happened before. But, Vern, you're right. That ball could have been caught. Watch them banging as they go down the field. Broadway, Julio, flag is thrown. Oh, he grabbed his arm Hooked right it. at the end. Yeah. Number 26 of the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. McElroy got whacked. Now on the sideline, Julio Jones for the day, two receptions. 35 yards, he'll rest for this play. Boy, he made an amazing grab. Yep. Uh, was it Penn State or earlier than that? Just San, San Jose State. One of the better catches of the, of the season. Here's that pistol formation again. Yep. Ingram. 
interesting when we talked to Mark Ingram about, and I asked him, what, what did you work on to be better this year? And he said the mental aspect of running, anticipating where the key blocks are going to be, trusting my linemen, and knowing where the big plays are. He said, I wanted to be better mentally in my run game, and I wanted to be better physically in pass protection. Two forty in the third. Play fake. Little flip out to Julio Jones. Oh, that could be a block in the back. Darius Hanks, absolutely. Yes, it is. Yeah, absolutely. There's your mental mistake. This is more what I think Alabama does the best. Now they they're supremely talented, but I think this is what. McElroy does best here too. Run the run game and hit the little bootlegs. Dumping the ball off, moving the chain type offense. Blocking the back, number 15 of the offense. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Second down. See him right in the middle of your screen right there. It was kind of a, a twofer there, wasn't it? Yeah. And so the ball is spotted. Well, let's see. At the 43. 20 to 7, Arkansas. They scored first, second play of the game. Mark Ingram tied it up with a 54 yard run. All the scoring since that time has come from the guys in the red jerseys. Second and five. Up the middle. <laughs> he just attacks he something. Chance Warmack was going to try to fold around and get the block number 65. But Ingram said, I don't have time. Can't wait for you. Sorry. Watch number 65 come around. And Ingram says, I'm going the other way. Don't have time. Does he hit the hole? The last time Greg McElroy had two interceptions in a game was last year against South Carolina. Mark Ingram took this club on his back and yes, rushed it for 246 yards in that game. He's in the wildcat position here. Right side, Preston Dial blows out a defender. And Ingram is out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Come on, the guy's just good. I you, mean, you, you know, I, I was a bit tickled. Now, I know how good Trent Richardson is. He's a wonderful football player. But to say he's a superior player and they won't miss Mark Ingram, come on. This guy reads the blocks. You called it, Burn, a wonderful block downfield. That time by Preston Dial, but set up so perfectly by the running back. Now Ingram will get a rest. Trent Richardson is on. Flag. Well, three of them. I don't know if there's been a lot of two-man backfields like this in college football. There's been a Friday few, snap, but not many. Ball start, number 76 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Mark it back. Well, Richardson, Ingram, certainly as accomplished as any two playing in college football right now. First down and 15. I think Arkansas fans are saying, we had ones like that, I think, a few how can just you, tease how, it. Just can tease you it. say McFadden and Jones? <laughs> First down at 15. From the screen right. Richardson cuts left at the five. Touchdown, Alabama. They are good, aren't they? The screen game. It was one of the red flags for this game. Robinson defensive coordinator said we must stop the screen game. DeQuinta Jones is the injured player. Sold downfield, dump it off. Got the big guys in front and just one of these two guys are as good as you get. Now Willie Robinson was telling us yesterday as they tend to the defensive lineman Jones in last year's game Alabama had third and nine or longer six times 
They got a first down, five out of the six. And here is the catch by Richardson. Smart, strong, and a good play call. Can't beat that. Here's the uh, try for the extra point. It's Jeremy Shelley. Knifes it through. Jimmy Johnson graduated from high school, Port Arthur Jefferson in Port Arthur, Texas. Among his high school classmates, Janice Joplin. I've done my homework. <laughs> Trailing the Arkansas Razorback, the backs ranked number 10. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson on hand from Fayetteville. And also in attendance, 76,808. That is a new attendance record for Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Kate Foster will kick off. Modricus Humphrey, number 83, back to return it. And he will do that from the three-yard line. Ouch. And Quinta Jones limped off. Let's get an update here, Trace. That's right. The defensive tackle has been dealing with a left shoulder injury all game. He suffered the injury in the first half. He re-injured it on that touchdown. They have taken him to the locker room. No official word, but it looks as though they will have to finish this game without him, guys. All right, Tracy. Arkansas has it at the 21-yard line. And I don't think Ryan Mallett nor Arkansas is surprised that it's somewhat of a shootout. They knew this was going to go to the fourth quarter, and they were going to have to continue to score to win. Mallett handoff right side, Niall Davis, number seven. And he quickly moves it out just short of the 31. Mark Barron with a tackle. Well, this quick game, of course, uh, garnered a lot of attention. Tough, tough break for Houston, Case Keenum is out for the season. They also lost their backup quarterback. And our best wishes to Mark D'Antonio. Suffered a mild heart attack, but he did visit practice. Matter of fact, Nick Saban, uh, Mark, was on his staff at Michigan State. Nick said he had spoken with him by phone earlier this week, and he sounded good. Niall Davis gets the carry, number seven. Well, take a deep breath. We've got 15 minutes to play. Nick Saban seems fired up. That's the end of the third. 20 to 14. Back in Fayetteville after this word from your local station. They broke a 7-7 tie, scored 13 unanswered. But Nick Saban's offensive troops just marched down the field and uh, have gotten to within the six. Last regular season loss at Auburn, 2007. Sweet. Good block, wow. That was Ray Dominguez, and now we've got a few flags flying. Robert Lester, number 37, took a shot out of bounds. This was pretty well defense. The speed sweep to the outside. The Alabama defense makes it go wide, defended, and then the tackle starts. And oh, you know what? You know what? That could have gone the other way. He was dragged down. Yes, he had to tackle. Now he's trying to get off, and it was dragged the other way. But remember, look where it happened. Hmm. The Arkansas bench. You don't get the benefit of the call over there. Let's see if they think about this, and it's against... It should be really against Arkansas. How about a no call? Just saying. There were two fouls on the play. Ah. Ah. Dead ball, personal foul, laid hit on number 37 on the defense. We had a dead ball face mask on the offense. Those penalties were offset. Second down. Well, effectively, Vern, you got your wish. <laughs> it was a no call or a double call, the same thing. Near the sideline. Lester starts to tackle. You got to tackle the guy, and then yep. he tries to let go, but oh, gets yeah. yanked down at the same time. And well, so, no call. No call. 
call, offsetting call. Yes, two calls on one play, offsetting. Now they've obviously just shown this on the large screen here. No, yeah. they got it right. I think so too. Yeah. DJ Williams sets up to the right side. Alabama showing blitz. There's Mallet. Childs popped in the air and incomplete. Joey Adams tried to get there and couldn't quite. And so we begin the fourth. Uh, we had hoped this would be a really uh, close ball game, and look where we are. Well, this is a tough stretch for Alabama. I mean, look who they're facing. Yep. Maybe the three wizards of college football and offense. They go Petrino, Urban Meyer, and Steve Spurrier back to back to back. And they knew coming in here with a Ryan Mallett quarterback and a young secondary, this would be a tussle. Third and seven. Mallet. Not free flag. No. Line judge over here had a very good shot at it and said no fall. And you know, Ryan Mallet could not step into this throw because he was rocked on this one. Remember the goal of the defense affect the box. You don't have to sack them. You got to put pressure on them. And he got hit just as he let it go and driven to the ground. Was it Nick Gentry? Yes. Mallet. The series before it was the blitz and this time just the front four put pressure on Mallet. Gentry number 58. Dylan Breeding punts it. Nice downfield tackle at the 15-yard line. Terrell Williams, number 25. 45-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Alabama has the football. Eight plays. Six of them were runs. That's how they moved it down the field. Play fake. That's going to be a hold. McAvoy <laughs> shoved as he goes out of bounds, but uh, there was some action back at the eight-yard line. Yeah, this was going to be a gimmick play. Jim McElwain was going to try to catch this Arkansas defense trying to stop the run and go for the home run on first down. The safeties were back. It didn't work. Number 76 of the offense. That penalty will take it half the distance to go. Repeat first down. That's on D.J. Fluker, and uh, Jay Beckett was providing the opposition. Yeah, Beckett moves to both sides, right and left, and this time he ran right through the tackle and Ingram. But you know what? There was nobody open on the play. Thomas and Krim, four and five. The safeties did not bite. First and 17. McElroy. Ingram. Jericho Nelson made a great play on that one because I'll tell you, when Ingram gets the ball in space, he really makes people miss. One of the great check down backs in college football. When he catches that ball, even if he has his back to the defense, he seems to be able to feel where the open space is. Second and ten. Five wide receivers. Empty backfield. Ingram is split out. McElroy finds Marquise Mays. Anthony Leon at one. And that's going to give Alabama a third and five. See, that's the flexibility that this Arkansas defense has. With Jericho Nelson, number 31, and Anthony Leon, number one, Two players that played in the secondary last year, they can handle those crossing routes in space. The question for me was, could they handle the power game of Alabama? Third and five. Vern, is it Beckett or nobody? He seems to be the only guy that can do it. Ingram top of the screen. Beckett comes from the right side underneath route. Ooh, that's going to be close. 
Caught by Julio Jones. Uh, looks like he might have it. That's where the size and strength of Julio Jones was able to carry the tackler for a first down. Broadway has been with Julio all game. Now, of course, this is reviewable. First and ten. Under 12 to go. Richardson pulls his way near the 35-yard line. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Tim, thank you. First and ten. Richardson in the Wildcat. McElroy, top of the screen. Here's Julio Jones. And this time, Arkansas defends the run quite well. Brian Jones, number 54. Well, these two guys, Ingram and Richardson, it doesn't even account for their pass receptions in this game. But you can see Ingram, he had that long touchdown run, and, and right at the end of the half, Trent Richardson had that long run also that really helped his stats. But Ingram has been amazing running the ball. 202 yards rushing the ball today. Yeah, that's a bad stat for Arkansas and great for Alabama. Ingram has Darius Hanks again coming underneath, and that's out to the 50 and a first down. Well, here's what's going to happen right now. Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, is going to see what we've seen. They can't put any pressure on McElroy. He's going to have to crowd the line of scrimmage and blitz. Just the way Kirby Smart blitz to throw Mallet off his game, he's not going to be able to allow McElroy to stand in that pocket and just pick him down the field. Because of that, will the blitz produce a big play against the man coverage? Let's watch. On first down, trailing by six. Fake the draw. Again, no pressure. Deep left side. Julio Jones Whoa. missed him by a yard. Wow. Second and ten. Kevin Norwood, number 83, on the field for the Crimson Tide. Wide left. Arkansas is coming. Richardson to the 45-yard line, third down five. Yeah, you could see they're going to have to bring the blitz. Beckett was not on the field, so if they were going to put pr any pressure, it had to be from the blitz. And they almost got him in the backfield. Very methodical drive again for Alabama. That's what they're known for. They've been effective on third down. They are 6 of 10 in the ball game. And the Crimson Tide looking at third and five. As Julio Jones comes wide to the right side. McElroy avoids the sack, pulls up close to the line, has a receiver open. It's first down. Alabama to the 25 is Ingram. Such finds a, his way free. Excuse me, Vern. Such an underrated part of Greg McElroy's game. His ability to feel the rush and buy time. This time he had to avoid the rush, stays downfield, and then as he scrambles out, calmly drops the ball off for the first down. We saw it in the SEC championship game. Remember that? Yes. And a player is down. It's DeQuinta Jones again. He's down at the near 35-yard line. 
Tracy reported he's been battling a bad shoulder most of the afternoon. This looks like uh, something involving his leg. Here's McElroy after he lets go. Oh, my goodness. That's Jay Beckett. And that is DeQuinta Jones. We'll get a check when we return. Fayetteville. First and ten. The defending national champions trailing by six, but threatening at the 25-yard line. Both tackles to the right side over here and an overload on the wildcat. And Ingram keeps it. Oh, boy. Cut down just inside the 20. Had he been able to leap over that defender, might have been gone. This package that Ingram, as Vern told you earlier, was so successfully run last year. He seems so comfortable with it. Remember, it all started here, this Wildcat That's formation, right. with Houston Nutt and Darren McFadden. Second down and four. Play fake, McElroy deep into the end zone, incomplete. Double coverage, eight yards back. Yeah, it was a nice throw by Greg McElroy that time. He put it up high where only his guy could get it. He was throwing it under the short coverage, over the safety, and only Julio Jones was going to be able to get it. The two safeties were back there, Thomas and Madison, excuse me, a corner of the safety, but that was a well-thrown ball. 8.04 to go, third and four from the 19, Alabama trading by six. Just got to figure, why do you come off the running game though sometimes, don't you? Yeah. Two wide left, two wide right. Razorbacks bring only four. Underneath pass, it's caught. And that's going to be an Alabama first down to the 12. Julio Jones. This was another one of those cross-pick passes that Alabama runs against man-to-man -man coverage. Julio Jones to the left, but he gets help when he comes across. Julio's here, but watch the pick coming across off the umpire. Remember, the umpire still is here in college ball, so you get a double pick on the play. Alabama now 8 of 12 on third down conversions. They have a first down at the 12. Ingram behind McElroy. You really got to admire Alabama's calmness, don't you? Ingram. 11 yard line. We just had that been there, done that. Yeah. You know, if we can handle that Auburn drive. Yeah, we've been behind by four. We told before, excuse me. We told you they were behind by 14 to Auburn. Can't have a more crucial drive than that. Everything riding. Second and nine. Richardson's on the field now. A nice one on one down here with Julio. McElroy looks that way. He's got a man open, but it's too far. Darius Hanks. Incomplete. Third and nine. Well, third and long. This was the game. This is what the Arkansas staff said we had to win. Remember, they got hit with a screen pass earlier. And Beckett is the only guy putting any pressure on the quarterback. Can someone else help him, or will the coach help him with a blitz? Jake Beckett will be on the right side of the Arkansas defense. McElroy nailed. And help. Denarius Wright, number 43. He got help, didn't he? Extra protection for Beckett over here. Chip him, but to the opposite side. Wright just outruns the block and gets a huge sack in this football game. And so the field goal unit is on. Jeremy Shelley from 36 yards out. A.J. McCarron is the holder.
perfect. McElroy limping. Willie Robinson gave them help. Petrino, Meyer, and Spurrier, but in the second half, he's dialed it up for Alabama. Only 76 yards of total offense for Arkansas in the second half, and Vernon only three drives. This is only the fourth time they've had the ball in wow. the second half. Well, Mallet carved them up in the first half, hitting Wingo on the second play of the game. Here was Jarius Wright. Yeah, in the first half, he was able to find busted assignments and make big plays, and Alabama never pressured him. Look at the space he had, and he made all the throws. Kirby Smart brought the blitz, and then all of a sudden, the game changed. Now, six-minute drive. Can Arkansas put together a drive and score a touchdown and win this game, or will that Alabama defense bow their neck and get a stop? First down and 10 at the 20. Mallet back, rush coming. Dante Hightower and the pass is delivered at the feet of the intended receiver. Dante Hightower and Mallet feeling the effect of the contact. Hightower made a brilliant play on this one. That forced the poor throw on the play. Mentioned earlier that Dante Hightower suffered a knee injury in this same game a year ago costing the rest of the season he was given a medical red shirt second down and ten three men down for the crimson tide they were going to blitz they audibled out of it alabama did. yeah handoff from left side good block on the corner but it was too good a block holding call two of them i think they're going to get dj williams I think you're right. Good holding number 65 of the offense. Oh. King up penalty from the previous spot. Second down. That's to Marcus Love. Apologies to DJ Williams. Now Marcel Darius uh, nicked in the first half. Yeah, he's boy, he's not even 50% out there. If the ball isn't run right at him, he can't make a play. Five thirty-nine to go. Twenty to seventeen, Arkansas. Mallet at the goal line. Finds Nile Davis out of the backfield, number seven. But now, big third down coming up. Third and 11. Yeah, and, and I think you got to get Darius out of there. I mean, remember the hit earlier when Nick Gentry pressured the quarterback? I don't think Marcel has any. The last two plays, he had nothing. Now watch him just fire in there and get a sack. But he has not been able to come off the ball. Five defensive backs on third and 11. Arkansas has two wide left, two wide right, and hang on, timeout, Arkansas. That one called from the coaches. 4.53 to go. When we come back, Hogs, third and 11. CBS Sports. Third and 11. Razorbacks only two of nine on third downs today. Alabama has five on the line and they bring all five. Hightower is blocked out. Mallet goes deep. Intercepted. Picked off by Robert Lester still up inside the 15. Ryan Mallett overthrew his intended receiver. 
Trying to throw the middle read against two deep safeties. Watch the receiver come inside and try to go down to the middle. But that time the ball hung too high. Trying to throw the middle read to the inside and he does not get it. Poorly thrown outside the hash and it cost him. Had to be in between the hashes. He threw it outside the hash. Intended for Childs, picked off. Robert Lester with his second of the day, fourth of the year. And here are the defending national champions in the Wildcat formation. Ingram with a direct snap. Goes left, gets a block. Breaks a tackle and is down at the five. Jerry Franklin. All you got to do is follow big number 85, Preston Dial, on that play. On the day, 322 yards, but two interceptions. One deep in the end zone as they were going in for a score. Keep it in 22's hand. I would. You? <laughs> yeah. Fairly decent idea. Idea. He's down near the three. Look at that pile. Yes. My <laughs> gosh. It just kept going south. First and goal. Ingram has only turned the ball once, over once in his career. Snap it to him directly and let that guy find a crease and push it down there and get some help from Blaios and everybody else. Mark Ingram, Heisman Trophy winner last year, and his team won the national title trying to defend the national championship, and he'd love to add a second trophy. They've stayed so patient and played great defense in the second half. Hand off. Touchdown, Alabama. Mark Ingram gets six. They went left every play. The Wildcat, the Wildcat, and then the I formation, and he falls into the end zone. Behind Williams, Carpenter, Warmack, and Blayhouse. And Preston Dial led the way from the fullback position. And we are told they will review this play. Well, they have reviewed it, apparently. Extra point is up and good. Well, Ryan Mallett wants it on his shoulders. It's on his shoulders. But when you put it to number 22, I'd feel good any time in this game. They mixed it up well. But when they went to Ingram and Richards, Richardson, that's their money, guys. The memory of that critical interception on third and 11. Yeah, yeah it's hard for these guys, the safeties, to get out of the frame of the quarterback because there was no width forcing him wide and when he threw it to the outside it was a pick all the way and then he just mashed it after the interception they just mashed it in and this Alabama team that has faced so much just turned back and said we've been here we've done it and they stayed so calm now as bad as the stats have been in the second half for Arkansas it's four down territory the rest of the game Marcus Humphrey out to the 20, down at the 21. And Humphrey will be slow to uh, get to his feet. Well, a week ago, Georgia came from 14 down, tied it up, and guess who went to work? He started off with a kind of a trick play. That was an earlier touchdown in the game. But he was kind of got him a couple times on easy one. But the last one was the last drive. And that's the winner in the two-minute drive. Here's Mallet back. Whoa, dropped. Joe Adams, number three. And after hitting 11 in a row, Ryan Mallett is now one for his last six. Yeah, but it's so deceiving 
There's 11 in a row. They were wide open. The second half, they've been covered, and he's got the pass rush. But that one was a complete drop. Second down, 10. Childs leads the way wide to the right side. He's joined by two others. Not much pressure this time. Mallet finds Jarius Wright to the 30. See where the spot is. That might be enough to move the chain. Line judge indicates with his left foot. It's at the 31. Hurry up offense for the Razorbacks. It is enough to move the chain. It'll be first down and 10. 2.55 to go. Five-man rush. Little pressure. Pass well to the left. Oh, dear. Will Lowry, number 29, got a little anxious. I don't even know if that ball was catchable. Catchable, yeah. exactly. Lowry was just cutting off the receiver. They might pick this one up. Pass interference, number 29. The penalty will be enforced at the start of the foul. Automatic first down. Good ball. He, he, he was just cutting off the player. Watch Lowry to the left side right here. The ball goes by, and then he hits him. I, I think that one was a bad call. And it brings up a first down and 10 after the penalty is walked off. 249 remaining, four-point margin. Ryan Mallett set his short, diving catch. Adams across the 50. And a first down at the 49, that's a gain of 19. See, that's when you show you got guts as a quarterback. You throw an interception over the middle of the field, and you come right back and feather one over the middle of the field. First down and 10 from the 49. Whoa, D.J. Williams. Came across. Number 45 of the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. A mental mistake by one of the real leaders of this Arkansas team, D.J. Williams. And it cost the Razorbacks five. McElroy was uh, banged around on that last touchdown drive. He's a little gimpy as he walks on the far side. Let's watch how Kirby Smart tries to put pressure on Mallet. Three down, blitz five, coming. Yep. Five come. <laughs> Catch is made at the 48-yard, 49-yard line. Greg Childs, 2.12 to go. Arkansas has used one of its timeouts. It has two remaining. Second and nine. Still plenty of time. Oh, for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Under two. He's being chased, lobs it deep. Oh, is it picked off? It was. Yes, it is. Dre Kirkpatrick, number 21. <laughs> Damian Square with the pressure. I think Mallet was trying to throw this ball away and misjudged. I think he was just trying to get it to the sideline and avoid a sack. And Kirkpatrick got both feet in. He got the pressure, tried to throw it away, and didn't get it out of there. Now, they have two timeouts left, I believe, and they need to stop. But can they stop this ground game? <laughs> and maybe the best running back, obviously, in college football. And they'll go right back to the Wildcat. Mark Ingram. Ryan Mallett. Third interception of the ball game. Ingram from the Wildcat. They have run it for 219 prior to this snap. And they get a few more. Dre Kirkpatrick with the pick. Yeah, nothing was really there. Kirkpatrick is playing up here. I don't know if he was in man or zone coverage on the play. Let's take a peek. He was in man coverage. He just turns around in the ball. He sees being floated out of bounds and just gets a freebie. Time called. 141 to go. I'm going to take a huge leap in the SEC West battle. I think what 
Nick told Tracy at halftime, we got to regroup and run our defense. In the second half, they have not busted assignments, and they've throttled this Arkansas offense. Mark Ingram remains in the Wildcat. William Vlahos will snap it back. It's true. Here's Ingram. Again, just to underline ball security for Mark. He's at one fumble lost in his career. But this is a big first down. What do they do? Third and about three or four. Time is called. Arkansas has out of them. Ryan Mallett had a big start to this ball game, but three interceptions, Gary, have really proven costly. Yeah, one in the end zone, one he forced down the middle and a poor throw on top of it. And then just moments ago when they had four down territory trying to get rid of it, he lays it up for a gimme to Drake Kirkpatrick. Now, if it's me, I run Ingram anyway, because even if I don't make it, I'm going to have that clock run down to 45 seconds when I pump the ball. I'm not going to stop the clock with an incomplete pass. Well, they, run it. they're going to keep it in the Wildcat. That means McElroy, the quarterback, is wide. Nobody's the covering them. They're going to say Yeah, it. you're right. They're going to play Absolutely. goal line defense. There's not a soul there. Will Ingram throw it? No, he will not. Will he get the first down? No, he will not. I, I, I don't think. I should back myself. No, I, I don't think he did either. Really I think that in. was smart by Arkansas. There's no way they were going to throw it to him. They played 11 on 10 that time. Yeah. Well, he raised his hand. You see? Yeah. <laughs> I'm out here. Yeah. I'm out here. Razorbacks. Are out of timeouts. Hmm. Short. Now then. Fourth and four or five inches. 120 to go. Field goal doesn't do the Razorbacks any good. Punt or go for it, Gary? They're going to go for it. Or they're going to try to draw them off sides. Ah, okay. That's why you're a highly paid analyst. <laughs> so Mallet did against the same, against Georgia with what 50 seconds left in the game. He's gonna have to do with under 50 against Alabama. McElroy for the day, two interceptions. Mallet for the day, three. His last two were brutal, though. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, <laughs> that one was in the end zone. I mean, he gave Alabama seven points with his second interception. And then the last one, he killed his drive. There's never a good time, but those last two were really rough. beginning of the day sorry many of these students camped out in tents outside the stadium began to form a line Monday night hoping to see the Razorbacks knock off the top team in the country they were up 20 to 7 Richardson's on the field oh, they're gonna go for it timeout they didn't have enough guys on the field. Darius Hanks wasn't on the field. Yep. They only had 10. 
You know what Nick is upset is they had the ability, they had them tricked, basically. And now they've tipped their hand. Ingram was the guy that got the running game going. McElroy dumped it off to him for a few times. They went to the Wildcat, and he finished it off with that run for the touchdown. For the day, 157, an average of six and a half, two touchdowns. Many of those runs out of the Wildcat formation. Well, here we go. 54 seconds to go. I, I, they might make it, but I punt it. Got a freshman punter. Haven't had a punt blocked in two years. Good point. Or a year ago. Excuse me. On fourth. Ooh, he did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Squeezed over his right guard. Well, what a comeback for Alabama. That's why Nick makes the big bucks, huh? <laughs> Goes for it, makes it, and finishes off a tremendous comeback on the road. And all they got to do now is take a knee and get out of here. Going after their 28th consecutive regular season victory. Greg McElroy, the senior out of South Lake, Texas, in his battle with Ryan Mallett, a Heisman Trophy contender. Mallett with a tough second half. And McElroy unbeaten as a starter since he was in the eighth grade victory formation on first down what a football game huh oh alabama wins its 19th straight sec opener they win their 28th consecutive regular season game. <laughs> Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide come on the road, find themselves down 20 to 7, resilient in the second half, patient in the second half. It, it was like we've been there before. They played like they played in a lot of big games before. You could tell.